Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of On Air. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm also joined by our guest, Mark Akers. Mark is the sales director at Allego um, and he's joining us today to have what I think is a very interesting topic of discussion. We're going to be talking about why SDRs fail to become good AEs and why many people fail on that journey. Um, Mark, first and foremost, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us and how are you? I'm very well and thank you for having me on. I've uh, been a long time admirer for the show, waiting patiently for my uh, for my invite. So <laughs> pleased, pleased to be here. Uh, delighted to have you. So um, look, before we get into topic, I'm really, really looking forward to this discussion because I think it's a really interesting point. But we always like to give our guests two minutes, two minutes to cover who's Mark and who are Lego, because some people will know you, but others won't. Sure. Um, in terms of who I am, I'm a pretty typical bloke, 30, 34 man, lives in the UK, fan of football, um, drinking, uh, red wine and food, really. Uh, got, a, got a small family, just my wife and a little boy. Uh, and I, as you mentioned, I'm a sales director for a company called Allego. So Allego are a full suite sales enablement solution. Um, so you know, modern sales enablement has changed a lot and we bring free products to market that cover all aspects of, of sales enablement. I think I did that in about 60 seconds. There you go. Nailed it. Give me a minute back. I appreciate it. Very much, very much appreciate it, particularly as this topic for me is a, is a juicy one because it's very topical in terms of timing right now. Um, and I see it a lot and I'm sure you do too. So, so let's just refresh on that. So we're looking at wider high performing SDRs or, or let's just say performing SDRs often sometimes fail to become effective AEs. Um, and it, it, it's something we see regularly. I, I want to just step back before we try and answer the question. Just understand your journey a little bit around that, because you've been through that journey and you've gone from SDR, AE, now in a sales director role. So you, you're a first hand case study of that. What did your journey look like? What are the things that you can remember from that journey that, that, that helped you get through that successfully? Yeah, I, so I think, although it might have been a slip of the tongue, I think the word, when you said high performing SDRs then change the SDR, I think that's a really important part of it. And mm -hmm. we'll cover that. Yeah. Um, but you're right, you know, I've gone through the journey. I actually started in marketing, saw SDRs picking up the phone, basically calling up the leads that I, I generated from marketing campaigns, blogs, newsletters, whatever. Um, and I thought, I want a bit of that. So uh, become an SDR um, somewhat slowly, actually, it was gradual. And actually, there's a, there's a key there uh, that I'm going to bring up, but it was gradual. So when I was in marketing, my, my boss, who, funny enough, is my boss now, but a different company, um, he said to me, why don't you try being in sales? I think you'd be really good at it. Um, and I always got the same answer. It was like, you know, when I said, well, why do you think that? It was, you know, I think you're, you've got the gift of the gab was so to speak. And it used to frustrate me that because I thought, well, that's not a skill. That's not a, a reason to move careers. So he set me a challenge to create an event. Um, I did a few events um, called Tests and the City, um, play on the TV show. I worked for an online assessment company. And what I did is I marketed an event, but I sold tickets to it. And you know, I was absolutely buzzing. The first event, I made something like £1,500 in commission in terms of ticket sales. I remember going home, telling my nan and granddad, um, you know, I'm taking you out for dinner tonight. They're like, no way. You know, you can't afford that. And I'm like, no, trust me, I can. Guess what's happened today? Um, they couldn't believe it. You know, very humble background, lorry driver. My granddad was and my nan worked in Sainsbury's, you know, so very humble background. They couldn't believe what I was telling them. They let me pay the bill. Um, so I took them out for dinner. And then I sort of just woke up very quickly after that and, and realized that more and more of my time was being spent as an SDR chasing the, the commission checks, which I, you know, I was a big fan of and of course still am. And yes, yeah, so I, I was an SDR for, for about two and a half years. Um, I was okay with that. You know, I, I really enjoyed that role. I had a great boss at the time who worked really closely with me. I made a lot of mistakes, um, some really funny ones, some some really <laughs> toe curling ones, but I made a lot of mistakes. I learned from them. Um, I enjoyed as an SDR cold calling more than anything else. And that's never really changed. Uh, and then the opportunity come to be uh, an AE, but about a year in, I realized I wasn't at the right company. I wasn't growing. I wasn't learning. Time to go and get what I, I thought would be a harder sales job. Um, and within two days of work at this next company, I, I realized 
I might have made a mistake. Like this is a proper sales job, yeah. big expectations, big targets. I'm not being molly or looked after. Um, and, and, and again, I wasn't successful at this company. Um, I was there for about a year. I, I didn't hit the targets that were expected of me. I had success, but it wasn't the success that they would want from me. Um, and they were very sort of cutthroat about it. And it got to a stage where we sort of just, I, I, I decided really to walk before I felt like what was being pushed. And that's mm. because good opportunities come my way. I started interviewing for other places. Uh, I remember I got offered like five five jobs and I remember sort of really being a little bit smug saying, look, I've got five opportunities here. I don't feel like I'm valued here. I don't feel like you, you give me the support that I need. And I left. Um, and then I've always been in a quota carrying role since, but with management responsibilities. And, and that's where I find myself today. You know, I've still got a quota. But I look after a team of AEs and SDRs and that's, that's, my, uh, that's my journey. Love that. Love that. Do you know what I, what I picked out of that? Um, it's interesting. Some of the best performers I've worked with, both in sales and also in other fields, whether that be sport or whatever it might be, um, in, in different walks of life, have been people that have failed. They've definitely failed. They've clearly failed at some point in their journey and they've not had it smooth and not had it easy and it's, it's it's been a driver for them to get to the next level they've been able to navigate that it's created resilience and i love the fact that you went and tried to do it in in, in an organization didn't get it right you know when it, it, you had to go, go and do that to get to the next level and i think that failure sometimes can be the the starting point i think going into our topic one of the first things i want to put on the table to explore is around the fact that Nowadays, SDRs get promoted to AE in nine months sometimes. They haven't got time to fail properly. They haven't got time to work out what works and what doesn't work. And so is there an argument there that there isn't the resilience, there isn't the, the, the substance behind them to get them through that next big step? Absolutely. Um, and I think what you're talking about is, is a problem. Um, and mm. it's one that I, I face as a manager, you know, where people ask me for that promotion and me thinking, You've been here, you know, two two minutes. I did this job for sort of two and a half years. Yeah. What what's the rush? And then, you know, people have said to me, like my manager's gone. The world's changed. You know, people, it's moved on. If if we're not going to do it, someone else is going to do it. And 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 here's the thing: when you've got good SDRs, particularly ones that are creating personal brands, they get people sliding into their DMs all the time and they make big promises and and this is a real problem in sales actually and i think not just sdrs anyone should listen to what i'm about to say because i'm really passionate about this problem is recruitment's tough and what organizations do is they try and poach the best talent because because here's the thing anyone looking for a job are unlikely to be top performers because top performers are well rewarded well looked after and they stay where they are so those interviewing you're always naturally skeptical as you know why your company letting you go yeah. um so what big companies are doing is they'll go to what they perceive to be top talent normally those that create brands on on linkedin they will offer them like eye-watering packages and and it's not just the money it's the perks it's the promises it's the career progression plan but what they're doing is they're competing in a really competitive market and they know let's say they've got an aggressive growth strategy to meet the investment round they just had they might know they need to hire 50 people well, that's really tough so what they'll do is they'll reach out to a couple of hundred people try and get as many people through that funnel as possible knowing that it's okay because we're not going to pay them this full package because a lot of you aren't going to work out. Mm. And and this has happened to, you know, I'll talk about one friend in particular. Um, they, they were on like, you know, what I would say was a reasonable salary five years ago. Someone come in doubled it. And it was things as well, like one year's maternity policy, like full pay. Mm. It was like this sort of X amount commission can be promised on target earnings. I remember saying to my friend, like, just be careful because you actually only get paid that if you stay the full year yeah, and you yeah. only get that maternity leave if you're there for x number of years and have a have a child um six months in cutthroat gone and actually she only earned half of that and and the problem was that become like the benchmark in their minds of well, i need to go and get a job that offers that again and, and they're not about uh do you know what a colleague of mine calls that salary hostage Mm. You, you become a salary hostage because for the rest of your career you're comparing against that or if you do want to go somewhere else you're paid so much over the odds that nobody else can compete with that and I, I think you're right it creates a very false environment and I think as SDRs and we get a lot of individual contributors and SDRs listening to this 
it, it, you know, take heed of that advice that it's not all about the basic package, package today. It's, it's, you know, your career in sales is long. It's about how do you achieve what you want to over that career. And you can get to the tor- hair and the tortoise, isn't it? You can get you can get further faster sometimes by not going as fast, ironically. Yeah. Uh, that is a fantastic, a really fantastic point. And, and what we're seeing is a shift in the market where people are being promised things that can't be delivered on. And surely as an individual contributor looking after your own career, you've got to take some responsibility for what due diligence you do on that. Yeah, yeah of, of, of course you have. I, I mean, at the end of the day, being in sales, right, pe- people will often, um, from outside sales perspective, will look at the commission. But what I'll always say back is, well, one, that that is for, for um, that is a reward for, for doing your job, but it's mm-hmm. factored into on target earnings. Here's the thing. You don't get paid pension on your commission. You mm-hmm. still get taxed on it, and, and it's not guaranteed, whereas other roles will get a higher basic, which is all towards their pension as well. And, and there's, it's a lot safer, you know. I, there was a funny video um, on LinkedIn the other day if other departments were, were treated like sales reps. And it was so funny, like in the sense of, you know, try, try and get a deadline out of a development team. <laughs> you know, don't want to don't, don't do it. You know, try and get ROI numbers out of marketing. It's difficult, you know, so many different factors. But with a sales rep, it is, no matter how talented you are, no matter what you're doing to the business. And I've seen people with unbelievable like personal brands let go. You, you are held to a number, you hit that number and you're all good yeah. and it resets every month, every quarter, every year, mm. or, or you're not and you're gone and you're only as good as your last quarter. Um, yeah. and it's tough. It's a tough gig. It is. And remember, there's a good point here around, you know, if let's say you're on 30 grand a year as an SDR basic, you've got, you've got some OT on top of that. You're 21, 22 years old. You know, you're doing reasonably well considering the stage of your career, albeit I think you and I are, uh, yeah, it's similar in that we're in our thirties. Very hard not to go. Well, we used to do this. We had to do this for four years. We have to be careful not to do mm. that. Times do change, but I, I think the point here is that you 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 kind of need a certain level of skill set to get to the next level and to do it well. This isn't about a race. And if you go from thirty grand, and somebody comes in and offers you fifty for an SDR role. Guess what? You've also got to deliver more. It's not just about going getting the payback. It's oh good, I'll get paid to do the same job. No, no, no. Because if you if you've got to multiply that twenty grand extra plus the on cost by what you need to bring in, so all of a sudden your measurement of success is a lot higher. Your your benchmark, what you have to deliver, is a lot higher. And you've got a question: Can I do that? Can I genuinely improve my output by that much? Am I worth that? Because if I'm not, surely I'm better to just gradually get there over another year or do an extra six months, whatever it needs to get myself ready, than I'm to go in and fail. And now guess what? I've got a failed role on my CV. I mean, you're absolutely spot on because going back to that inflated salaries, inflated role, that competition, six months in, the investors will be saying, cut the fat. Mm-hmm. If if they're not delivering what we expect of a 50K salary, cut the fat. And like you say, you've got a foul role on your CV. You've got to start again. And, and then really, you just take that big step back. Um, so that, so there, there's there's a lot to consider. And, you know, these, these, there's lots of companies out there that make big promises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think this is where this kind of, individual and company responsibility both come into play, don't they? That the, you have to take responsibility for your career. You have to take responsibility for making smart decisions. But as companies, we also have to be responsible. It's very easy to get pulled to 23 year old, you know, SDR, get pulled to a flashing light of an extra 20 grand a year. I get it. Totally get it. And as companies, we've got to make sure that we're creating a sustainable uh, environment within sales because otherwise people will leave it. Otherwise, people will, will, will get rid of get get out of the career, go to other places, and then we're all in trouble, and it makes it it even harder. Let me just let me just dive in on something. So, we want to talk about why SDRs fail to become AEs. One of them is because you know, I guess we we, we touch on now they get put into an AE job too early. Can I just take a step back? What's the difference? Like in your view, what's the difference between a a really shit hot SDR and a, an AE, like what, what's the difference in the day to day, in the, the skill set, in the the, the the traits to make you successful? You said to keep this to under half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that might be difficult. Look, he, here's the thing. First of all, right, we, we, we again, we're saying the same thing. What's the difference between a really good SDR being back to me? Here's, here's a newsflash, right? Most people that are chasing their promotion 
are chasing a promotion. They're not actually focused on being top performing SDR. Um, and I, I remember, uh, like, I would almost be embarrassed if I wasn't performing well in my role in hitting tights to be chasing a promotion. It kind of feels like, you know, what, what you're doing, you know, like you, you've got to you've got to focus on job number one. If you're a top performer there, cream always rises. Opportunities always come to those that are being successful. I think when you're constantly the one asking for it, it kind of, it's, not, it's not the same, right? But again, mm-hmm. sometimes managers are weak in the sense of one, they worry they're going to lose that person that, so they promote them too early, or they're actually trying to fill a gap in their team. And it's the cheaper alternative to kind of get someone you know, someone you're comfortable with, someone that's good on the phone, let's give them a chance. And and actually when that happens and you're sort of promoting them into a role early in what they need, then you're also not giving them the opportunity to make that, which is what I was going, that gradual transition. Mm. You know, think about how I started between marketing and sales. And then as an SDR, right, I didn't just become an AE overnight. The, the agreement I actually had was every fifth meeting was mine because my target was four for the week. Um, so a book four for the week and then Christ, I was motivated to get a fifth meeting. That was my meeting, right? And 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 it was a gradual switch. And because I knew that was coming and that's what I wanted to do, I'd done loads of other things that were going to help me when I made that jump. But but here's the thing, the organization didn't meet me there, and that's why I left. Mm. So slightly going down two different talk tracks here let, let's focus on one from an organization's point of view you can promote too early and you can make it an instant switch and you might not have a, a clear part like onboarding path in place because you yeah. don't necessarily treat these sdrs that you promoted as new hires when you should mm-hmm. because they're brand new so a manager can let them down in, in several ways there from an SDR point of view, they can demand it too early. And when they get there, they haven't done any, any of the groundwork, like the homework, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not sitting here saying I'm best practice, but I can just only share with you what I did. And that was that gradual piece, you know, every fifth meeting was mine. I studied the people I sat opposite. So, you know, one bloke in particular, um, Pete Marshall, you know, he he never knew at the time, but every time he was on the phone, sort of, you know, one headphone of mine come off and I was just listening to his conversation, all, albeit one side of the conversation. But I remember, I remember like there was lunch times where he just, he didn't want me to go on lunch with him, but I wanted to go on lunch because I wanted to bug him. I wanted to ask about that call he's had, what happened, how did that deal with that situation? But it wasn't just calls either, you know, it was in pipeline reviews, in forecasting. I, I wanted to see and I wanted the justification. And I know sometimes it would have been like, who are you to be asking these questions? But I'd be like, so why are you forecasting that? Why do you think that's going to close? You know, what, what are the risks here? Um, but, you know, so I, 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 I studied the people around me. Now that's more difficult in a in a virtual world you know look at me i'm i'm in my spare bedroom i don't have the sales floor anymore i really do worry about sdrs that don't have a sales floor at all ever you know i'm 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 all embracing the remote working i I know i think you and i probably have slightly different views there i i i I feel like you know it's for some people it's not for everyone i certainly wouldn't do it all the time right Mm. um but yeah i feel for people that don't have the sales floor um i I used to listen to recordings, you know, they didn't record calls all the time, but when they did, I'd listen to them. Then when I started doing more calls, I actually, I asked the manager to sit with me. I remember them thinking that was a bit weird, like me proactively saying, will you come and sit in this meeting with me while I do one of my calls? Um, But I I got that from my driving lessons, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. I had a driving instructor called um, Ray Tan. He's he's probably dead now. Um, (laughs) But I remember him telling me about my test. He was like, if you want, just so you know, I can come on the test with you, but no one ever does that. And I, I remember going, no, I want you to come with me. And he's like, you sure? I was like, yes, I'm sure. Like, if I fail, Ray, I want you to be there not to get secondhand information off me. And I remember like the day of the test, um, the instructor took me out and Ray sort of did his like this little whistle noise if say, don't forget about me. I turned around and went, oh, can my instructor come? And that, and they like, they had a problem with it. They were like, why do you want him there? Do you, do you really want him there? Because he's whistled to you. So are you sure you want him there? And I was like, no, I want him there. Anyway, Ray, Ray, come with me on the first time. Ray, come with me on the second time. Ray, come with me on the third time. <laughs> um, but what do you think our lessons were in between each each test? It was, this is what you did wrong. Let's focus on that. And it was all his opinion rather than just, oh, I think I did this wrong. I think I did that wrong. 
so so I, I took from that that's how you learn so managers used to come with me and then when I realized it wasn't scalable I started to have more meetings I started to get started to record it but I recorded it on my iPhone um, and I would send them the recordings it was a very manual arduous way but in our weekly one-to-ones I'll tell you go did you listen to that recording what did you think of this what did you think of that um, so and, and then that aside right like I, I genuinely I studied sales podcasts books webinars linkedin wasn't what it was today i wished i had it back then you know where everyone's trying to share tips and tricks every day me too guilty um but yeah i i did so much to make sure that when i become a full quota carrying sales rep i've done as much of the homework myself to make that move as easy as possible um so yeah i feel like i've got a massive rant there no do you know i think there's an interesting point in there and i think we have to be careful um as, as I said earlier, you know, 30 something year old guys not to be sitting there going, oh, the generation coming through, you start to sound like your parents and soon your grandparents, yeah. right? But it, 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 there is an element of truth in there that there's, we have created an industry where people move fast. And what that does is it creates an expectation where people move fast with a generation who have got access to everything who therefore can move fast. And it, it all feeds into this cocktail of actually there's a lot of pressure to move people. You know, I don't know what the average tender is saying. It depends on what report you read at the moment. It's, you know, you, I, sometimes I read it's nine months, sometimes I read it's 18. But bottom line is SDRs don't average enroll for two years. No, they don't. That's just the reality. It's less than that by some way. And in my view, you can't do something for a year and be an expert at it. And you certainly can't do something for a year and go, right, I'm ready to go and take on the next challenge um, and be exceptional at it. And I would far rather wait six months, learn something intentionally, earn it and be great at it when I make that move or transition, as you've said, over a period of time, which gives you ability to stop, go faster, go slow, all that kind of stuff. Then I would be thrown in the deep end, unsupported, there are now higher expectations on my head and I'm not prepared for it. And, and, and we've created an environment where that is normal. We we have. And it's interesting, right? Like I, I've been in this role for nearly 10 years. I'm not an expert in this either. I had a discovery call this morning. I ran out of time, mm -hmm. you know, because they were waffling on and I didn't. I wasn't selective enough of my questions. Yeah. You know, I, I knew I had a talker on my hands, but I still asked the questions that I wanted to know that in truth, I could have got them another time, ran mm. out of time. You know, I'm still not an expert in this. And, and as I said, I've been, I've been in a quota carrier role for about 10 years now. Yeah. I suppose that takes us back to what is the difference between an SDR and an AE? So much, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've got is an Excel spreadsheet it sounds very manual it's, but uh, under each tab are all the different things that i think you need to know from an sdr to an ae point of view mm. and I, I looked at it before uh, before and there's over 90 things on there right I, and and the top the headlines are there's competitors there's integrations there's discovery calls there's objections there's demos negotiation buying processes um forecasting contracts there's a new tech stack and under each each of those things there's maybe five or sometimes as much as 25 things in them mm. that you need to know and we have like a 180 scoring so i'll score them on a scale of one to ten of their knowledge they score themselves and it sort of helps work out where they need to be um and and and, and we use them we I know I'm trying not to promote it too much here, but we, we use a Lego for that as well, like a competency framework so we can see where yeah. I've that, et cetera. But so there's there's a lot there. And I think one of the big things that you've got to do as an SDR is you've got to, first of all, when you become an AE, you've got to almost switch your mindset a little bit okay. um, in the sense of SDRs. Well, let me take a step back here, actually. Here's some of the things SDRs don't do today that they need to do to be an AE, right? A lot of SDRs, I know this doesn't happen in your business, right? But I know this happens in most businesses. A lot of SDRs hide behind emails. Yeah. It's a quick way to get activity up. You can put someone in a sequence, bang, done, don't have to worry about you again, right? Mm. But here's the thing. What makes a good AE? Being able to have a conversation. An SDR is shy away from the phones. Yeah. So being an SDR now, if you're an SDR now and you're not cold calling or making cold calling a big chunk of where you spend your time, you, you, you start in your opportunity for growth for an AE because you need to know how to have conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you become an AE, it's having those conversations, but actually they're flipped now. An SDR, their job is to really 
talk to a prospect and to convince them to take the next step, right? That That's ultimately what they're trying to do. Yes, you're trying to listen, but it's a four or five minute conversation, right? As an AE, you're having a 30, maybe 45 minute conversation for a discovery call where you want your talk time to be flipped, like almost like 25, 30% where you're listening. And that's such a skill set to work on. Um, so it's going from being the talker to being the listener. Um, and then, as I say, it's all the other things, but without losing your principle as well, so many SDRs become AEs to avoid the grunt work, the grunt, the grunt work being the, the hard, cold calling. Um, yeah. And, you know, the amount of SDRs are, I've known in my life that become AEs and they, you know, air quote, forget how to prospect. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you did this, like, why can't you do it now? You know, um, yeah. and it sort of becomes excuses, et cetera. Um, the other thing is remaining positive. One of the things I loved about being an SDR is I could save my day at 4.59. One more cold call, book a meeting, and jobs are good. Mm. Green pen comes out on the board. I've had a successful day. I could go home. I could call my nan, call my dad. I had a good day today, book a meeting. As an AE, you don't have that level of success as often. You know, I'm not ashamed to admit this. At one point in my life, I went five months without closing a deal. Right. And then it was like a bus, right? Three or four come along. But I went yeah. five months without closing the deal. And to remain positive in that period of time when you're measured solely against revenue is really mm-hmm. hard. So there's that you've got to keep your positive mindset when you become an AE, keep your discipline for, for prospecting and pipeline generation. And you've got to learn 100 plus different things. And, and some are really complicated. Really good point. You know, I wrote down that your timing, patience, the difference between what I do now affects today and what I do now affects three months time. Um, you know, if you've got a three month sales cycle, a lot of us have, particularly if it's from, from outbound, two, three month, fairly standard B2B um, you know, average sales cycle, you're going to be you're going to be affecting today what bills next quarter a lot of the time, completely different, much more mature mindset. And you've got to be patient. An SDR can get a result in five minutes, can create, can be used to that. And do, do you know the other point that sticks out is that thing about, you know, being a get let go of the grunt work. I want to get rid of the grunt work. Actually, it's the grunt work that's getting you somewhere. It's the grunt work that's getting you better. You know, hiding behind emails, you're not getting better. You're not getting better at anything. You're not getting better, getting better at discovery calls. You're not getting better at reading prospects, building rapport. You're not getting better at, at, at learning how to spot objections, learning how to, 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 to see opportunities. You're getting better at pressing buttons. And that ain't getting you anywhere. And I think it's yeah, both of those points really stand out for me. And I think as an organisation, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, we have to say no sometimes. And one of the most powerful things you can do is say no at the right time, whether it's to suppliers, to clients, to employees. Yet we're fighting against this balance of, geez, we're going to lose everybody. It's hard to keep hold of people. Everybody wants to be moving as quickly as possible. And I guess my question to you is, how do you manage that? What are the things in your mind? How do you say no to your team when they're not ready? Um, And what are you doing to try and get them ready to go to that AE role? So what, what can you do? I think, first of all, right, the number one reason sales reps leave beyond thinking they're going to get pushed. The number one reason after that is because they don't feel like they're developing. Yeah. Right. They, they move because they want to go somewhere else and learn. And that rings true to why I left my first role. I wanted to right. go somewhere else and to, and to learn. Um, so if you create an environment where that SDR genuinely believes, you know what? I'm learning here. I'm becoming a better person. Um, When I say person, I mean sales professional, right? But but equally, I'd argue the same. I think if you're a better sales professional, you're a better person because you because you you can have better conversations. You listen Mm -hmm. more. Um, I I, side side waffle here. I definitely have a better relationship with my dad and my wife because I've learned to have sales conversations Mm -hmm. where you listen more and you ask the right questions more and you uncover a bit more. So anyway. If you're providing an environment where SDR believes that they are getting better, they believe in what the company does, they believe in the journey, you can have a conversation with them. Because often, right, sales is very emotional. We're all very emotional in sales because it's attached to what, what we do of our weekends and our spare time. It's 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 so it's such an emotional game. And sometimes when an SDR is banging down the door for the next thing, 
it's actually because they're having a tough time right now. Mm-hmm. And it's because they're frustrated with it. They're not getting the results they want. They 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 feel like that they've they've run out of people to to speak with, etc. And it's about reminding them that actually being an SDI is one of the most critical roles in a business. Maybe the most. I don't know, right? It's so critical though, because ultimately nothing happens until something's sold. Um yeah. And nothing sold unless a, a meeting's put on the board. So it's such a critical role. And genuinely, being an SDR, you are learning. When I was an SDR, I learned to make cold calls, right? And and I learned how to mail merge. This is before the likes of the sequencing tools. Um, I've got a funny story about that as well. Really yeah. funny, but I haven't got time for it. Um, but now if you're an SDR at a company, and, and I'm going to say like us, because we, we coach every week, I'm not going to shy away from that. You learn how to write creative um emails um you learn how to research prospects and people you learn how to personalize you learn how to make cold calls you learn how to make video and get comfortable on camera you learn how to send voice notes you learn how to build up pain and ask great questions so you actually you learn so many well, i'm gonna call it life skills that, that will help you throughout and mm-hmm. that was what was always said to me you know i mean um my my first boss, as I say, my boss now. He said to me, "If you can cold call, you can pick up and, and and have a conversation with a stranger. You can make anything happen for yourself." And it's just so true. You know, I posted about this on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. Someone cold called me asking for an interview. He got one. Mm, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wasn't a good interview, but you know, it was it was an interview done the same. He he got one right. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of being an SDR today, there's so much they can do. And if you provide the right environment where they feel like they're learning all these skills and they're buying into that 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 journey, that's a big win. In terms of how you get an SDR um, an SDR ready to be an AE, well, first of all, yeah, you have to map that journey out for them, mm. right? And that journey has to start at least six months before they make the move. And that's got to be like, you know, my idea here is that that skill mapping. These are all the things you need to learn right Mm -hmm. let's make sure that we learn them together and asynchronously right you go and do your bits of your homework um and and then it's about inviting them into the ae world so our sdrs join our weekly ae call coaching it used to be friday mornings now monday afternoons they they join every monday afternoon for an hour and a half they hear an ae discovery call play out and and they ask just as many questions over ae so we invite them into our world um they 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 can join pipeline reviews if they want they can see what pipeline's going on and we're very transparent about pipeline and targets and mm-hmm. who's where etc so we we have like a full plan in place as to to be an ae you need to at least be scoring halfway on all of these things to, to even be thinking about their next move and then we do it gradually i'm a big fan of the you know whatever the target is for me it's the fifth meeting's yours right yeah. um and it's then it's then giving them access to what good looks like so you know one of the things we, we really utilize again I'll, I'll just talk about our own technology we really utilize a lego there's playbooks there's libraries of best practices, mm-hmm. which could be recordings. It could be um, call recordings, video recordings, or just, you know, I'm going to record myself in the Lego, giving some some training yeah. and guidance. Um, there's our previous team coaching there. So, you know, when, AE, when SDR joins tomorrow, you could go and listen, if they wanted to, to the last five years worth of team coaching sessions, if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about giving them all the resources they need to be successful, resources that they can do in their own time, and on the clock as well, you know, it's not all all um, after work hours, but it's about making that a gradual process and, and one that when they're ready and when the business is ready, it's going to make sense. And and it's not it's not if it's when. Yeah. Um, so there's lots you can be doing there. But honestly, there's nothing wrong with being SDR for a couple of years. Nothing wrong no, with it whatsoever. I, I totally agree. I wouldn't replace my time. We weren't called SDRs in those days. And, and, and like you, mail merge was a treat. So was my fax machine, believe it or not. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> but I want to I wanna wrap up with this. So you're talking to an SDR. Let's say they're not in your organisations. You meet someone down the pub. They go for an AE role. Been in an SDR role for a year. What the, what the, what's the top three bits of advice you give to them in terms of getting themselves back already to step into an AE role? I mean, before I gave advice, I'd say, are you really sure you want to do this? <laughs> I, I would, you know, yeah. because just because you're an SDR doesn't mean you have to be an AE. Mm-hmm. You might want to go and work in customer success for an example, right? Yeah. You need to be, again, great having conversations in customer success. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'd ask them, I, I would, I, I genuinely, and I wouldn't accept, oh, it's the next step or more money. I wouldn't accept that. Yeah, I yeah, want to know why you want that role. What yeah. do you think that looks like day to day? Because it's not driving around in a Beamer and, yeah. and getting big commission. That's not what it's like. And some people um, just want progression. Yeah. Wherever it is, wherever it is, that's why I just want to be progressed. Well, no, I want you to want this, not yeah. be progressed in any, any way. Don't don't chase the paychecks. Don't chase the status. Ch- chase the, actually the day to day and what you want to do with your life. And, and and really, where do you want to go after being an AE as well? Yeah. I, I don't want to be an AE forever. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to have a quota carrying role forever. Um, so I'd ask them why, and, and I really want to understand that. In terms of best bits of advice, is well, what are you doing now? Mm-hmm. Privately, what are you doing now to prepare yourself for that role? Yeah. Who's your mentor? Right. Like who, who is it that you're going to study? And I always say to, to, to the SDRs, I, I say, look, who do you feel most sells like you'd want to sell? Because there's no point just going and studying everybody. I, I'm a big believer in who is most similar to you and, and like from disc profiling. So yeah. I'm like I'm like a DI. Right. So one of the first things I said to, to my boss is, right, who here is a DI and a top performer? That's whose calls I want to listen to. Mm, um so yeah what are you doing privately who who's your mentor like who who are you studying who's going to help you out and then it's never stop prospecting just Mm. because you become an ae don't don't think you actually an ae is an a is an sdr and an ae in one a good yeah Um, Yeah. So those are my three bits of advice. Love that. Do you know what I love about you, Mark, is that that you can tell you're a natural coach and you've put a lot of effort into becoming a great coach because I asked him for three pieces of advice and you gave me three questions before you gave me a piece of advice. And I think that's a that's a a really good demonstration there of somebody who's really got coaching um, at their core. So a good, good, not you know, it wasn't an intentional. uh, uh, example but a good one nonetheless really interesting topic Mark. I've genuinely enjoyed exploring this and I think there's some 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 real food for thought for people listening to this that are either thinking about stepping into that AE role uh, and maybe questioning whether that's the right thing or, or not and how they go about that or maybe they've done it and they're struggling and there's there's some some opportunities to identify what they might need to just reverse back and do that they maybe haven't done so far or whether that's them or the organization or both so Look, thank you. Thank you for, for, for sharing your insights, sharing your ideas and your thoughts. Um, really enjoyed talking to you. Before we wrap up, who should we talk to a Lego? Um, who can a Lego help and how can they get in touch with you guys? Um, so get in touch with me um, because I'm the one that's, that's, as I say, I've still got a quota. Um, yeah. So a, a Lego is a fit for a lot of different people, right? So as I say, it's full sweet modern sales enablement so it really covers a, a whole array of topics be that onboarding and training be that product launches and rollout content management virtual selling coaching and collaboration conversation intelligence it's got it all and, and that really services sales leaders sales enablement product managers marketers etc so anyone that that feels like one of those things is of interest then of course happy to have a conversation um in terms of where you can find me uh linkedin is where i make the most noise um so i uh, mark acres a-c-k-e-r-s i'm on linkedin um happy to connect with anybody there and i try to write and share content daily that, that might be helpful love that love that Mark, thank you so much. Really enjoyed having you on. Hopefully you'll come back on in a, in a year's time and we can talk about some of those people that have been on the journey and your team and look back at what worked and that really appreciate your time. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Cheers.